Janice, are you there? At your service, sir. Enter the manosphere. Of course. How can I assist you today? Give me some of that dating foolishness. Will do, sir. I always knew I wanted to be a full-time content creator and put out videos for six years until it finally happened. And yet with dating, I kind of expected to just sit back, um, live my life, and he would show up. Prince Charming would just show up at my door or even just, again, spot me from a distance and ride up to me on a horse. Welcome to Manage High Nice Dating. Let me make this clear right from the start. This is not a this video. I repeat, this is not a this video. The woman in question shared her story online to raise awareness and let other women know they are not alone in experiencing life without ever having had a boyfriend. And that's where we come in as men, to bring awareness to men. We're here to break down the true meaning behind her words and understand why it's no coincidence that she, along with many, 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 many other women, hasn't and likely won't ever have a boyfriend. Remember, women will always tell on themselves. Just let them talk long enough. Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Naomi. I'm 31 years old and I've never had a boyfriend. I've never been in a relationship, had a situationship, been in a talking phase. I don't even remember the last time I had a crush, to be honest. And for the longest time, I was so ashamed of this fact. I was so scared of what others thought of me and how they would judge me and think that there's something wrong with me or that I'm a weirdo or a freak, but none of that is true. And there are actually thousands of us who have had the same experience, or should I say, lack of experience. Okay, stop it right here. Question to you guys who are watching. She is 31, never had a boyfriend, never had a relationship, never had a situationship, never had a talking face, and doesn't remember the last time she had a crush. My question to you is, do you believe her? I'm not saying she's lying, but the reputation of the modern woman in 2024 isn't exactly one of innocence, modesty, or commitment to serious relationships. Let's be real. Most guys today aren't going to automatically believe that a woman in her 30s has never had a boyfriend, especially in a culture that celebrates hookup culture, casual dating, and situationships over genuine long-term commitments. This is the reputation that women have created and perpetuate to this day. So I don't blame you for not believing her. And let me take it a step further. Never assume that a woman is speaking the truth. Be skeptical and always take the time to really understand who you are dealing with. I am a Christian and my faith is the most important thing in my life. It really shapes who I am, how I see the world, how I live my life, my purpose, and all of that. So definitely is at the center of dating and what I'm looking for in my future spouse. For my entire life, I truly believe that God was hiding me. It felt like he had a Harry Potter invisibility cloak that he just tossed on over me. For a long time, that did bring me comfort. I'm like, okay, God's got my love life in control. He's saving me from heartbreak and trauma and all of that. But then I recently heard a quote from a psychologist that really clicked things into place and he said you can have trauma from things that never happened and I definitely feel like I have trauma from having never been pursued never desired seen asked out and all of that I really struggle with self-esteem self-confidence how I see myself and my self-worth here we go again she says she has never been pursued never been desired seen or asked out and let me show you a classic clip that sums this all up well, see, one of the problems here is, is that good guys, the good guys that um, didn't go through menopause and- Oh, and they may have. Oh yeah. They, they may have, have but they okay. made it well, through. Maybe they did, but maybe they were too smart to just give up on things and get yes. themselves a fast car and a young woman. Um, yeah, you guys are taken. So what remains are all the ones that nobody else wants. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, we have to stop right here. Okay. <laughs> this former supermodel claims she is invisible, but what she means by invisible is that she is not seen by Chad and Carol. In other words, the guys who do see her are invisible to her. This is not a coincidence because according to research, 80-90% of men are considered invisible to women who are looking for Chad and Carol. That's why it's hard to believe this woman when she says she's never been pursued or desired. Like I said earlier, women will always tell on themselves and this woman is no exception. 
Like I mentioned, I grew up in Toronto, well, the outskirts of Toronto in a little suburb, and it never felt like home, which is why I never really was intentional about dating there because I'm like, I don't want to date a Toronto man, I don't even want to live here. But then when I came to my dream city of Los Angeles and decided to be more quote unquote intentional with dating, I found myself struggling. <laughs> Classic roadmap here. Not seriously dating in her prime years, during high school and college, when she was in the best position to date. Instead, she was only interested in the Toronto chat. The rest of the men in Toronto were invisible to her. Then she moves to her dream city, Los Angeles, which says a lot about her aspirations and the type of lifestyle she's seeking. Now she turns on the intentional dating button and struggles to find success. I wonder why. Then I was here in LA and it's been kind of shit since, but I guess they've all been kind of shit. Especially in LA. I think the other states are probably fine, but. What's wrong with LA men? Because I've only dated they women. I think they're the prize. I'm hella straight. <laughs> men aren't the prize? Well, like we gotta, we gotta humble ourselves. Mm. Women who move to cities like LA often come with specific expectations and ideals about the type of man they want to date. Only to get humbled quickly. These men have an abundance of women vying for their attention, making it harder for someone with unrealistic standards to succeed. Again, a side effect of that low self-esteem is that I cannot even make eye contact with men. I see a cute guy, I'm immediately like eyes to the floor. And I'm learning that like guys need girls to drop the handkerchief handkerchief, I still don't know how to say that word, because they too are afraid of rejection. My friends have even pointed out that when we're in group conversations and a cute guy comes in, I kind of turn into that Homer Simpson meme where I'm like disappearing into the bushes. I become a shell of a human being. I'm not my normal like outgoing and bubbly and funny self. And one thing I learned through the mindset coach that I'm seeing is that it comes from a limiting belief that I'm ugly and I am unworthy, like to talk to a cute guy. Yeah. Again, I told you, trauma from things that didn't happen. Trauma from never having been in a relationship. So in other words, this cute guy is good looking. Of course you're gonna feel ugly if he's prettier than you. Many, 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 many women look to date men who are above average in looks and dismiss 80-90% of men based purely on appearance, including height. Even older women way past the post wall cling to these unrealistic standards. It's, California is very flaky. It's not like the Midwest, you guys. Um, they don't want to date. I don't know what they want. I, I don't know. And then if you see the comments, all these guys are like, I'm good. I don't want to deal with women. <laughs> okay, well, you don't have to if you don't want to. But, you know, I would still, I'm not looking anymore, but if, some, if I met someone in real life, in real life. These women don't want to accept that these men are out of their league. This woman here is not unattractive. She mentions having acne problems, but overall, she's average looking. There's nothing wrong with that. But she'll have to compete with women who are eights and nines if she wants to date Chad and... Now, let's get to the biggest problem modern women face. Check this out. The hardest thing has definitely been that I am for sure a hopeful romantic. I know normal people say the word hopeless romantic, but I'm hopeful that God is writing the best love story and he's going to make my meat cute better than any rom-com out there. But yeah, I devour rom-coms. I love them. I live for them. I'm such a sucker for them. <laughs> And so my entire life, I was kind of expecting this moment of a guy will just see me, come up to me and be like, you're the most beautiful girl on earth and then ask me out. And of course that's never happened. So when I moved to LA, a big wake up call was the lack of effort that I had put in my dating life for the past 30 years. In every other aspect of my life, with friends, with my work, I always knew I had to put in effort and I did all that I could to make those dreams a reality. With all the freedom and independence women have fought for, the Disney princess syndrome persists. In 2024, many, 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 many women still expect Prince Charming to appear out of nowhere and think the world of them. Expect sparks to fly and fairy tale romance. They put tremendous effort into their careers and education. But when it comes to dating, they are reluctant to do what men have traditionally been expected to do. So in this regard, these modern women want to hold on to traditional dynamics while benefiting only themselves. Now pay attention to what she says next. 
But now I'm back at a place where I'm honestly living my life, working on becoming a better version of myself and healing and trusting that God's gonna make it happen in his perfect timing. I actually had an experience recently that kind of reminded me that I am quite possibly on the right track. I was walking in Santa Monica on my way to Sephora and I was at a red light. Then all of a sudden I hear a voice from beside me and this dude is just like, hey, do you know where this taco place is? And I turn and I'm like, no, sorry, I'm not from this neighborhood. And then the light turns green and I start walking, but he continues to walk beside me. And then he starts a conversation, tells me things about his life, that he's a politician, that he just moved to this neighborhood also three months ago, asked me questions about my life. And then eventually asked for my number and I gave it to him. I honestly was not fully attracted to this guy, but that was honestly the first time I feel like I've ever been approached in public by a stranger like that. And again, I didn't put in the effort. Like I didn't even know he was standing beside me until he spoke. I didn't have to like make eye contact or smile or do all the things that the books were telling me. And so I feel like that was a situation that God sent to remind me that it's not all on me. Like I do not need to strive. She gets approached but isn't fully attracted to the guy. And that's the story for most men who take this route. Most will be rejected because they're not considered Prince Charming. As a result, men stop approaching women altogether and women complain that the men they want won't approach them. With 50% of adults being single, this issue is only going to grow with detrimental consequences. Check this out. I'm happy to say there has been improvement within the last couple of months, but it's definitely been tough and it definitely all comes in waves, especially loneliness. I'm actually just coming out of a deep, dark, feels like a tsunami kind of wave of loneliness where the future feels hopeless and I feel like I'm forever going to be alone. Loneliness is a serious issue and we're facing an epidemic. Many, 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 many women today are unwilling to date 80-90% of men, making the deeper connections needed to address this loneliness increasingly elusive. The current dating market, with its shifting priorities and unrealistic standards, fails to meet our fundamental need for genuine connection. Remember, relationships have always been more than just romantic fulfillment. They're about survival and mutual growth. As long as we focus solely on individual desires and societal trends, these issues will persist. For real change, we need to return to the basics of human connection and reassess what truly matters in relationships. But I can only see that happening if society collapses. And so I read this book called How to Get a Date Worth Keeping by Dr. Henry Cloud, who's a Christian psychologist, and he has this dating challenge where he's like, your goal is to meet five new guys a week. You just need to talk to five guys and it doesn't have to be in like a romantic sense. It could be someone who is in line at a coffee shop, at a grocery store, like just start a conversation. And so I'm like, okay, I could do this. It's a challenge. I can put in the effort like I have in other areas of my life, easy. Except I would go out into public and try to talk to guys and would just fail. I would just turn into that shell of a human being and it just felt like this crazy spiral that honestly went on for months. Now can I get a drizzle drizzle? Drizzle drizzle. Drizzle drizzle. Drizzle drizzle. Man, it's really working. Protect yourself at all times. This video has officially been highlighted.